scamming head of DBS's anti-scam team. There's so much communication out there. Why are scams still happening? We them confident that we won't gonna scam. Yet, right? Three out of five of us already almost gonna. The customer would have lost close to a million. <gasps> are banks to blame if you got scammed? This is your daily catch-up. It was so much more natural, dude. Just do it that way. <laughs> Hello, are you interested in a part-time job where you can earn $4,000 a month working from home? If this sounds familiar to you, then someone's probably tried to scam you. And today we have someone who can tell us how they all work. Alan Tang, head of DBS's anti-scam team. Welcome to the show! Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me. Drama. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah. So uh, today we are talking about scams because more than $330 million was lost to scammers in the first half of 2023 alone. Yeah. Oh my God. Honestly, right, amongst the cast, like we have a rotating cast of a few people, right? I think out of like five people, three people almost gonna already. Almost. Like almost, to cancel okay. our account. That's yeah. Good. Actually, I think I pay one dollar plus already. <laughs> <laughs> but I want, I want to preface this episode today, right? Because I think a lot of our audience members, they are generally around, around our age or so. Young adult, right? Is it we young adult or not? Uh, <laughs> sure, sure, hit, sure. I haven't hit three yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, right, we them confident that we won't gonna scam. At yeah. least that's the sentiment. Yet, right, three out of five of us already almost gonna. I hope la, that what we can take away is like being able to identify and educate them on this. So on the type of scams, right, like Alan, right now in from what you've seen, right, what is the most popular la, scam that is being like used by scammers? Presently, the most uh, common, the most popular one is the phishing scams, which is hitting the streets uh, on a daily basis. You receive some kind of unsolicited kind of uh, SMS mm. with, that comes with a link. Because as you know, nowadays, a lot of us uh, do online shopping where you're expecting parcel every alternate day kind of stuff, right? So yeah. unsuspectingly, you go and click those link and they will bring you to a page where you're going to pay certain, certain admin fee. $1.50. Yeah. <laughs> It's a fake website <laughs> and uh, whatever you're keying in, the fraudster will see and they will log into the actual website and they'll take away your credentials and then start transferring your money out. This type of phishing scams, uh, it evolves, right? It evolves from multiple channels. It can be from posting item on carousel, especially, that they hmm. call it a fake buyer scam, oh. right? It's all phishing. It's all linked to phishing. So they will pretend to be lowballing with you, want uh. to buy something from you. Huh? He lowballed? Yeah, they will lowball <laughs> as well to make it look more more authentic than what they're buying. <laughs> yeah, Low volume is authentic on Carousel. Yeah, it's quite, quite, quite. <laughs> quite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, so they try to quickly close the deal and tell you that uh, they're going to send you some link to go to another website that, that looks like a Carol Pay kind of website right, right, for right. you to oh. key in certain information so that you can receive payment. So instead of receiving, say, for example, $20 for a low bought item, you, you lose about $1,000. So that means I have to send a thousand dollars out lah. No, you don't have to. All you need is to your credentials. That's it. What credentials exactly? Your user ID and PIN. Oh. So by keying in, actually, they are already assessing it, your account on the other side, on the, the real side. Oh. Once they go in, they just scan the scan and pay, and the maximum amount they will take is below two thousand. But if they have access to your entire bank account, why don't they just like? MP? That is a hit and run, right? I call uh -huh. it hit and run because in order to get more. They have to provide more, the, the 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 customer has to provide more information. Like right, the He's, higher amount that it is, yeah, they may yeah. set the like so, transaction yeah. limit. So if it's the first and second time, uh, they just go for the quick one. So the only way they can get money out of me is if I give them my user and pin. Yes. So I can give them my handphone number, my mother, father address, doesn't my name matter. or full name, all but these things. I see, I see. I see also doesn't 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 take anyway. So the most important thing is uh, your user ID and pin. Yeah. Your ATM card number. Okay. The card mm. number itself and the date of birth, I can also Aww. do wonders. Yeah. So is there a specific demographic that is most vulnerable at the moment? Uh, no, I mean, uh, scammers, they target everybody. There's no specific group, right? Uh, of mm. people that, that are being, being scammed. Uh, because they don't know who they're calling also. They just call <laughs> any number, just punch any number. Somebody pick up. So long as you pick up, I will scam you. From there, they will also gauge what kind of profile of customer uh, or victims you are. I won't call it customer anymore. Mm. Victims you are. If you're speaking to a young, very young generation, they will use this tactic. They used to speak to a professional, they use that tactic. Claire, at least oh. they so on the spot, they yeah. will change quickly. They will just take whatever that's along the way. La. Just yeah. sweep everything. La. Even mm. you have money, I take your money. If you don't have money, I'll use your account to take money. Oh. 
of my most like because I hate scammers also. Then one of my favorite, uh, like, my, my favorite content to watch on YouTube, right, is this guy who's basically he made it his life like a agenda, right? To scam the scammers. Review all these scammers. So he will like log into their camera system. Then he will act as a caller. Then he'll call in. Yeah. Then he will say he will review what they wear. Their name, yeah. their <laughs> date of birth, everything. Because they use a fake name. Uh. Then I, I feel a lot of satisfaction when I see the faces <laughs> of the people like, oh my God. And then they all freak out. Yeah, yeah there, they, there are some users yeah. of that. I know they, what you're talking about. They counter hack back that, those calls. Yeah, 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 yeah. They show the hack camera. Yeah. You, you the like power. to watch that, right? <laughs> you like, you like. No, no, I, I watched that only <laughs> for my for, for my knowledge and, and, and <laughs> entertainment. But, <laughs> Fun to watch. But, but to be honest, anything that is on YouTube, you only mm. can believe up to this certain level, that's it. It's good to know, but don't fully believe everything that you see or you, or you read. Mm. Okay, I got a question. This one, about love scam. You know, you swipe on the apps, right? Then I started to notice that there are all these fake accounts. And it's, the, it's, it's always standard one. Two picture, then like no detail one. Then the name is some chapalang. Then you still swipe. Huh? No. Too chill already, cannot be. <laughs> Don't lie to me. Yeah, then suddenly got a lot. But what is the outcome? Like if say I swipe right, right? I match this scam scammer, right? Is there a real person there? And at which point are they trying to scam me? Am I going to meet up with a random person? Is this girl real? So love scam happens <laughs> like what you call it the swipe here, swipe left and right, right? <laughs> you, look, uh, you, you, found, you found a pretty girl, a handsome guy, you, are, you like it. Mm. And they start talking to you <laughs> despite your own profile picture. Hey. How you look. <laughs> oh, Okay, then? then? <laughs> so, so it's a long process. Yeah. But always have the highest returns. Return. Oh. Yes. Right. Highest love, return. Ah. Yeah. Because love. Damn uh, it. <laughs> once they build your trust and you start to love that person or you have some affection, you believe exactly what he or she says. Yeah. Uh, whatever he or she asks, you will try to give in order not to disappoint. So best thing is that as soon as they start asking for money, they start to pouring their sorrows to you, say that they're in some kind of trouble. They the mother's sick, all this type of thing, they need mm. like you know, hospital yeah. bill, or something. Especially if your boyfriend or girlfriend is from overseas, all the way from maybe US or from very far apart, right? Yeah. Very common one is they're stuck at the sea, they're seamen, they don't have network. But sometimes you ask yourself if they don't have network, how they WhatsApp you, right? <laughs> so, for seamen, like, so, so, you can't so, trust No, not that they cannot trust seamen. They say they are stuck at sea for whatever reason, they're stuck at custom. Then the guy really, they, oh. uh, they, they really <laughs> stuck at sea, they, they actually. <laughs> Oh. But what if true? Then like that's the point, right? You yeah, don't know yeah, what yeah. if it's true. Be it IG, <laughs> Tinder, whatever we call it, all kind of dating apps. Some really found true love there, right? I I I must I must state that, right? Oh, okay. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> what uh, if my wife is a long-term but, love? Story? But those who are already involved, they're always not clear, right? Mm. Uh, like in, in Chinese saying they say tang tang ji zhe mi. You you cannot see when you're inside. Oh. Okay, okay. Right. So, by the inside the episode, <laughs> yes. right? So, yeah. once you are too invested in your emotions uh, and mm. your feelings, you tend to, you tend to, 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 to neglect a lot of other um, those are red flags. Bottom line is, um, if you're not, not, you don't know him well or her well, and mm. they start asking for money, asking That's you to the invest. Yeah, right. Some they don't ask you for money; they ask you to invest. Right? They show you all kind of investment profiles. Uh, we have a lot of cases where love scam being evolved into investment scam, <laughs> oh. right? Yeah. They will show you all kind of investment profile that can earn money. Oh, I already dump in so much money. You see, I make so much money. Then you believe me. Okay, you're also dumping in. Mm. Then after that, I MIA, your money gone. But actually, your money is not in those investment company. It's with me. Actually, right? uh, even if they're not scammers, if you just met someone on the dating app, a real person, and they ask you to invest very early on, that's also a red flag. Uh. But, no, but, but like you love is visually what? impaired. And so you, don't, yeah. you never know. I want to backtrack a little bit, right? Because I want to get to know you a bit better. So, uh, I'm seeing here that you are the head of DBS Anti Scam Team. Uh, yes. So, for how long, eh? Currently, into this role for the last three years. Okay. Right? Since tw late 2019. Prior to that, I was with another bank doing similar stuff. And even earlier than that, I was from the police force. Oh, oh okay, yeah. okay, okay, I see. Nah, yeah. So, having spent three years in this space already, like, how how has the, the the scamming world evolved? Traditionally, back then, of course, um, scams are seasonal. Say five years ago, since 2018, 19 onwards, so we see more and more of such cases. When the, the scammers or the fraud syndicates hit a few cases, they say, hey, so easy. They continue. It's free money, right? But how then how do you like come in? Like if someone say, help, 
I'm scammed. Then how, how do you like help them? You can't stop the transaction if it's already conducted, right? <gasps> yeah. But more is to, to, to stop whatever that is left, right? And block all the uh, cards or your account okay. right. to prevent further losses first. That's your first concern. Uh, then, of course, you report to the police. During the last four or five years, after they keep going to the police and police start contacting us, asking where the money goes to, where, mm. where, where is the beneficiary account, so, so that we can provide information for them to help the victims trace the fund. I'm curious to know, how does the bank work with the police to so tackle this? We started off with the anti-scam command back in 2019. We were the first bank to station our, our, our staff at the police station to assist them ah. to trace funds on the spot. Ah. So make it faster. Like BBS Polo T. Oh. Uh, <laughs> so there's a scam station. Uh. Yeah, 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 there is. Oh, the, 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 anti -scam, the anti scam command now in, in, in the commercial affairs department, they've expanded to, to become as huge as a police station, right? Uh -huh. Previously, it was only a team and they have multiple divisions there and they have a special room there for all the bank staff to sit in there. So every representative uh, oh. of the bank all sits there. Oh, stress, oh, yeah. yeah. Time's essence. So the, the, the earlier you detect, the earlier you report, the, the, the higher chances of recovery. But nowadays, even. They, they, the, the way that they move the funds are very fast. Within minutes, they are out. Mm. And they will move multiple layers, yeah. multiple accounts, multiple banks to make it very difficult for you to trace where exactly the money oh. is. Right. So they make it like Roja. And, oh, and is this all um, isolated in locally or is it international? If it's on the internet, it can be anywhere. You're so, mentioning syndicates, right? Yeah, there are all, 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 tons of syndicates. Um, just like uh, a franchise. When they have this type of... Uh, method more of the they put into their dark web whatever their franchise franchise mm. out oh. syndicate can just buy their French buy no say buy buy their idea and start attacking I'm so, just imagining like a bunch of <laughs> scammers or potential scammers uh. like going on the dark web then they take a course in fishing like that then yeah. they all learn how to fish yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so it's exactly like when you want to hack Hackers also, they go to that way, they learn from there. Uh, and then from there, they, buy, they, they learn how futures, to hack. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you all have to learn how to scam in order to defeat the enemy, right? Not really. We, we learn how to scam. <laughs> la. I mean, the tactic that they, the scammers use is, is only one stuff, which is social engineering. Okay. So we just mm. have to social engineer back. That's it. What is an example of the social engineering? So Ooh, teach us. It's, How the little the scammers will help. <laughs> no, no, so, no, no, it's, it's, not, it's nothing, it's not oh, a secret. Oh. So just and your risk is, is, is actually is to, is to convince you in any way. Different kind of scam use different kind of convincing method. Mm. Mm. Right, like, right, like those uh, government official impersonation scam, they use fear in you to convince mm. you. Authority. Uh, yeah. For job scam, they use enticement. But time uh, from also, home, $5,000 every day. Yeah. Right, then love scam would be those very... The promise very, of companionship. Pretty, pretty, girl, pretty girl, handsome girl, boy to convince you. I'm, I, I, I like you, I love you, whatever. So it's just a <laughs> giant carrot in front of the stick. La. We always make it a point, no bank or the, a lot of enforcement enforcement agency will ever ask for any user ID or pin. No way. As long as somebody asks you for this information, it's a no-no already. Oh. Right? This is the two key thing they always ask user for. User ID, ID and pin. And pin. Your internet user ID yeah. and pin. No, but sometimes they ask me for just my name. Then I risk it. Then I just off no, the No, my name is okay. <laughs> I mean, we also come across cases when we call, yeah. we tell customer we are from the bank. We are being challenged also. How mm -hmm. do I know that you're not a scammer? So, Wait, then how you mm -hmm. prove that you're the, actually the bank? So we have our ways. Uh, <laughs> one of the very simple things is that I can give, I dare to give you my name. I give you my number. You can call my bank at the normal number, not that I give you, right? Ask them, do, does, do you have this stuff? Do you have this number? Can you put it through? Or can you ask the contact center to verify that? Did I call you? Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I mean, the scammer can't do that. They, they won't be able to do that as well. I mean, they can eventually, maybe they, 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 they can take it, pretend to be having a small, small bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this yeah. 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 Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. Uh, but, I mean, no, my name has been used before. So, oh. so, so yeah. Oh. Yeah, so, 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 so there are cases where, where my colleague call the customer. The customer said, the, your, your colleague, Alan, didn't call me, call Alien. So when my colleague asked, no, I didn't call anybody. I think my sister just off your phone at this point. You can? Call, like, email, <laughs> yeah. Can even go dating app. Yeah. So I think you've talked a bit about how, like, uh, the anti-scam team, like, what they do when someone calls them and say, I've been scammed. But how do you, like, prevent the scams? Every single transaction done by anybody are being monitored closely by the system, powered by AI, powered by machine learning. On a daily basis, we picked up suspicious transactions that are likely to be scammed. Our specialists will review that transaction, assess the whole case, and then quickly call our customer to 
to verify the transaction. So well. how many of these transactions do you all encounter a day? On a daily basis, we deal with about between three to 400 customers. Three <gasps> to 400. Day. Like suspicious transactions. I mean, they're bound to have false positive as well, but every transaction, uh, we will call our customers to verify. Is there any like particular case that kind of sticks in your mind throughout these like three years that you've been doing this? One that actually really still still lingers uh, in my mind is is what is is still like what earlier you mentioned the love scam but not really love scam they found out that this this profile of this customer doesn't have a family doesn't have dependents mm-hmm. right so that's where they they use a different tactic rather than loving you and whatever but they say they want to take care of you be your goddaughter godson uh, stuff. Then they, then they, they, they will be very patient by treating you very well, talking to you daily on Mother's Day, Father's Day. They will send you gifts. They will really do this sort of investment, right? Build this a uh, be your relationship for your trust. Then they say, oh, I'm going overseas to for 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 business. And that's where she was asked to transfer tons and tons of money overseas. By the time we spotted this, the customer would have lost about close to close to a million. <gasps> right? How long was this? Did this play out for? Uh, close to a year, uh, but it's not like daily kind of thing. Mm. Every few weeks, one transaction, one transaction, for, from small amount until it goes to a very big amount that right. caught our attention. How come this 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 customer keeps sending money to various places? One mm. moment Turkey, one moment Dubai, one moment Poland, mm. all over the place. At the end of the day, we, we managed to convince her after a very long time and managed to save another huge sum of money for her. Those laws we try to recover is gone. You cannot find the, the those people, sir. Usually you can't find. What I'm very confused about is that even though there's so much communication out there, why are scams still happening? It's quite a common thing that people would think that it will never happen to me. For example, you read, read a, a case in the, in the news, right? This victim lost how much mm. like, amount of money. Yeah. So long as you have some consideration point that this could one day happen to you or to happen to your loved ones mm. and you don't want to go through that, then maybe you start to think twice, mm. right? Just like illness or whatever, uh, they got cancer, this one, this one will happen, happen to me. Mm-hmm. But when it happened to you, then you will say, why me? And more often than not, things always happen happen when you are, you are least uh, aware of it yeah. during mm-hmm. that period of time and you're caught by surprise. Mm-hmm. Then finally, you're the one, right? Mm-hmm. And then by then, it's too late. Hot off the press. Okay, not really hot off the press, <laughs> la, but I think in recent news, Jameis Lim, right? has recently come out to talk about how the banks should bear the cost of the loss. Scam victims should not have to bear more than $100 to $500 in losses with banks and telcos bearing the cost instead. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I heard of that, right? Uh, I know this has been discussed or brought up in parliament. So yeah. I, I'm sure the parliament, the ministers, uh, the government will be able to come up with a very fair resolution on that. But having said so, we don't just depend on all this, right? No matter how much control, how much protection I can give you, but if you don't practice your hygiene, it, it's still, uh, still, still useless. Actually, it sounds good on paper like, when I first heard it, but then the, like, the more I think about it, right, it's actually like, may not be the best idea. Because like, say, if everyone just feels like, or oh, the most I'm going to lose is like $100 to $500, right? The price of oh, a, a plane ticket to Bali, then I feel like people are going to be like less responsible in a sense. Yeah, because you're taking the responsibility away from them and to the bank. Ma. Or even worse, cynical mind, people are going to start like creating a new kind of scam where they pack out their friend and then they transfer over and then see whether like, oh, I got scammed, I got scammed. And then the other friend has the money, then they share after that. Oh, full mm. circle thinking yeah. like a scammer. <laughs> well done. I go to dark web and fine. <laughs> <laughs> now you say already, then people... No, wow. but yeah, you just so destroyed his idea, right? James. <laughs> <laughs> Is it useful to set the minimum amount to withdraw? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have been advising a customer, periodically, please check your account, mm. right? <laughs> Instead of watching YouTube, sorry, but hey. <laughs> no, please watch YouTube. Yeah, hey, hey. Uh, watch, you can do uh, watch podcast, you can, right? Yeah, you can do both. Time. Watch informative YouTube, right? Then then other stuff, like right? This uh, like this video, okay. If you're not spending that much, set your limits lower a bit. Lower, lower. a bit. Don't take for granted that oh, I, I won't spend two hundred thousand. I just set two hundred thousand. Mm. Right, I my, my I know my account got no two hundred thousand, but yeah, if your account got fifty thousand, I will just empty everything. Yeah. Without yeah. having to change, you already set the, the limit for me. The scammers will say that, "Well, thank I'll you very much." Take what I can get, lah. Yeah, no, you already opened the door me. for me. I will yeah. take everything. But if you set, say, one thousand max, you know that your this is your spending. Mm. That's the most. Nah, you can even though you got twenty thousand max, the scammer can take is now one thousand. If they want to empty your account, they need to go through multiple levels of staff. 
then maybe they will turn it off. They walk away. Something that I've just did, right, is not just set the transaction limits, but then also the transaction notifications. Yep. Usually the setting is like, oh, if you make a transaction over like $100, then you will receive, uh, you can choose to receive like SMS or email or whatever yeah. that, that tells you that you've made this transaction. Yeah. But you can put in your app, right? Like for every transaction, I just put, notify me if I spend more than $1 this way, this way. If it's an overseas transaction, if it's a, a credit yeah, card yeah, transaction, yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. So no matter what, now I know that whatever money goes out, right, I will be notified. Right, then, right, right, right. Touch wood lah, if like someone hack into my account and then like, even take out $1,000, like straight away, my watch is going to show like $1,000 out. I didn't do that. Well, I think I'll, I'll turn on the notification things. Right? I didn't do know it. that you can. Yeah. 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 Set it at $1. You that can set one cent even. Because I, I, after you told me, right, I go and look through all my transactions. Right? I can't remember like more than half of them. <laughs> so like a bit difficult. Even so if I so, so the, 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 the earlier first. that you guys call the bank to report, the chances I would say higher is because the way that the things flow is that money must go from one place to another place. Mm. Even though I cannot save 100% of your funds from say from the first level. Yeah. All right. I may save maybe 30% from the fourth level. Yeah. It's better than nothing. So we talked a bit about how <laughs> are the DBS anti-scam team like kind of like tries to prevent scams but I want to know a bit about how the after the scam. So I understand DBS has some like goodwill payouts and stuff like that, right? Or like counselling or so. Like what exactly is that? Uh? Okay, so Google is not of course to, to everybody or any anything. It's all by case by case basis. So yeah, it depends on, it. Depend on your situation, <laughs> depending on the circumstances. We have specialists who who are trained to to, to handle these our customers. And yeah. if need be, they will also refer to professional counsellors. And then from there, they look from a whole perspective and see how best we can help. When you say counselling, right. meaning what? Like to help them through the financial loss? It can be anything. It can be, can be through, help them through the financial loss, can help them through emotional My after defects, scam, um, then like... Whatever, I mean... Free I mean, you, I mean, I'm, It's free, I mean, we will refer you to... to oh, we will okay, give you, okay. offer you some kind of helplines mm. if you need. Right, I mean, even our own specialists who, who manage customers, they are also, uh, to me, I, they are also like counsellors. They are very, very nice, very patient. They will talk to you. Mm. They will try to counsel you as well. But if your situation has become so serious that we really involve uh, professional counselling, then of course we need the professional to come right, right, right. Uh, Just to round out this conversation, since we are the head of the DBS anti-scam team, <laughs> what's your professional advice for people to avoid getting scammed? Practice cyber hygiene. Uh, be careful when we are dealing with unsolicited messages or whatsoever. If you're not sure, ask, verify, mm. check, download the scam shield, report those scams there. Uh, from the scam shield, you can actually get up to date. Mm. Uh, what is the latest kind of scams that's going around? They can even help you to prevent. You can block numbers there. You, oh. can, you can you can report the cases there. I saw the ad on the MRT. I think. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> so don't, don't, don't just bypass those sort of advertisement on MRT or whatever. Oh. Just read through mm. and then check check on it. You you get you tend to learn something, right? Mm. And um, also, don't click any links that you are not familiar with mm. or even in your emails. So phishing is not just SMS, can be from anywhere. Oh, right, right, right. SMS, All can right. be from your DMs in your in your, in your your social media, can be Telegram, can be anywhere. <laughs> no banks in Singapore now has ever sent any clickable links yeah. via SMS since 2022. Wait, okay. Oh. Is that actually a thing? <laughs> I so that means if true. there's a clickable link, it is not the bank. Yep. Okay. Bank don't send any more clickable links at all since, since 2022. 2022, right? Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Useful, useful. This one. So, as quickly as possible to reach out if there's yeah, a suspected untrue. suspected scam attempt, then I think enabling your transaction alerts that was quite useful. I'm definitely going to do that. Um, setting a lower daily limit for transactions that essentially creates more barriers, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then also downloading the Scam Shield app. Yeah, I think these four things are like, if you want to take away anything from this episode, I think it's these four first. Yeah, actionables that you can immediately implement. So if say a scammer is watching this video right now, I want you to look into that camera over there. <laughs> and what will you say to them? We are ready. <laughs> wow. <Yes. laughs> this yeah, like Batman. Yeah. All right. And that's it for today. This episode was brought to you by DBS. So a big thank you to them. And of course, Alan for coming on the show. We hope that this episode has given you a better idea of how to identify and avoid scams. And DBS also has this initiative on TikTok called 
Buzz a Bestie, where seniors and youth ask common questions about online scams. And the aim is to connect generations and create a safer online space for all through anti-scam education. So hit up the DBS TikTok account at DBSSG to check that out. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. If I call the scam hotline, right? Mm. Is it the must take very long one? No, there are like, two. There press are multi- one. Mm. Press no, no. There will be someone who pick up your calls within seconds. Oh, it's not the same as like I want to no, change no, some no, account no. details no. that I like wait three hours. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, no. thank God. So if you want to skip the queue, right? You call No. But, but don't abuse the line. <laughs> <la>. <laughs> yeah. right, don't, don't call when you want to change something. You want to inquire your bank account yeah. balance. You call the front. Oh, you mean this is not the... Uh, this yeah. is not for me to create a new account. You got some then you Why not? Help me. If you do that, then you are actually... Preventing some real victims yeah. who try to call yeah. in. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah.